Hey, what is up, guys? This is Thunderstruck115, and today I'm going to do something that I haven't done since early 2019. A Top 5 Zombies video. And today is going to be the Top 5 Underrated Maps in Treyarch Zombies. And when I say underrated maps, I'm referring to maps that the community seems to have an opinion that I think is lower than they really deserve. Maps that are better than most of the community gives it credit for. Not necessarily the best or worst, so just keep that in mind. So kicking things off at our number 5 spot, we have Forsaken from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The reason I have it on this list is when people seem to rank the maps in Cold War, usually Forsaken is towards the bottom. And while I certainly don't think Forsaken is the greatest map in Zombies, I definitely think it's better than Dia Machine and Firebase Z at the very least. Better than Mauer? Personally, I don't think so. But the reason I say that is it's distinct. It feels a lot more distinct than Dia Machine and Firebase Z, and there's more to do on the map. There's more special enemies too, which increases the amount of engagement for me anyway. And the Crystal Axe Wonder Weapon is a lot of fun to use. The two most common complaints I hear is that number one, it takes too much from the mission Red Light Green Light from the campaign, but personally, I don't really care about that as long as it plays well in Zombies, and I'd say it does. And the other is that it's a very disconnected map, which... If you care about that more than I do, I suppose that's your thing, but I don't really think it's an issue because once you get Pack-a-Punch open, you can go to any of the four main areas directly from Pack-a-Punch. Forsaken is definitely not a great map, but I think it's better than a lot of people give it credit for, at least somewhat. Moving on down to our number four spot, we have Nuketown from Black Ops 2 Zombies. It's a simple survival map, so it's obviously not anywhere near the top of my list, but I actually think it's a really fun survival map. And what really makes it for me are the random perk drops. Now, a lot of people really seem to not really enjoy this, which is fine. But I think it adds a lot of replayability because no two matches of Nuketown are the same. Outside of Quick Revive landing in the spawn room on round 1 if you're playing solo, nothing is really guaranteed on this map. You might get Jug early but you might have to wait a while for it as well. You might get Pack-a-Punch early, or you'll have to wait a while for it. There are some wall weapons, but they're not all that great, so more than likely you're gonna need to hit the mystery box. What I like about Nuketown is the adaptability. You have to play with the hand you're dealt and rely on your skill. And as such, I think it's actually a really good map that a lot of people tend to overlook. And that's why it's on this list. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have Voyage of Despair from Black Ops 4. My opinion of this map has only increased with time. I used to think it was the worst map in Black Ops 4, but then I thought, okay, it's at least better than Blood of the Dead, but now I actually think it's a pretty good map. Obviously, it's nowhere near the best, I'd say B or C tier, but I often see a lot of people listing it as one of the worst maps in Zombies, and I just cannot agree with that statement. Number one, like, wh what exactly does Voyage of Despair do that's so wrong? Besides being in Black Ops 4, a game which a lot of people don't really seem to like. I mean, maybe the Catalyst spawn in just a tad too often? But beyond that, there aren't really too many glaring flaws with the map that actively make it unfun to play. Sure, it is trying to be a quest map, but ultimately I don't really think most of the side quests are all that interesting or worth it. But I do love the chaotic nature of the map. It's tight as hell, and combined with all the Catalyst zombies can make for a really hectic experience that makes me feel alive while playing it. If you know me, you know that I love the Catalyst because how they force you to prioritize targets, and then there's also the Stoker and the Blightfather to shake things up as well. It's a map that really does keep you on your toes, and you need to be using your tools to their fullest extent if you want to stay alive. The map is big and laid out linearly, but there's a whole bunch of fast travel portals, so I don't really think it's a huge issue, and the moving Pack-a-Punch I don't really take issue with either, because just going up to any of the altars tells you where to find it. So yeah, it's certainly not an exceptional map, but I still have a lot of fun playing on it, and it's nowhere near as bad as a lot of people make it out to be, which is why I had to put it in the number 3 spot. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have Zetsubo no Shima from Black Ops 3. My opinion on this map has changed a lot, and I mean a lot since it released. When Black Ops 3 was new, I considered it to be among the lowest maps, like around Transit and Dire Eyes levels of bad. As time went on, I found, okay, it's actually kind of fun when you have the tools and shit, 
but it's still not particularly great, but it ain't bad. But what really made me appreciate this map was Cold War of all things, because I think with the release of that game, it really helped put my perspective on what makes a good zombies map into focus. And the more I played Zetsubo, the more I loved it. The main thing that I hear a lot of people criticize this map for is that there's too much to do on it. But the more I played it, the more I realized I don't love this map despite all the stuff you to do on it. I love it because of all the stuff you can do on it. Most of this shit is optional, which is great, but if I want to go out of my way to get it, and in most cases I do, I can. Which gives me plenty of things to do on the map, beyond just simple survival. Of course, I will agree that main progression items, namely the power and the pack-a-punch, shouldn't be as obtuse as it is. So I can understand why a more casual player might not like this map, but the side quest, I take no issue with now. Because I came to the realization that if I don't want to do the side quests, I don't have to. Of course, it's not perfect, I'm not the biggest fan of the main easter egg. The thrashers, while kind of challenging, don't really reward you enough for killing them. And the spore bags are kind of annoying. But still, I think it's a great map. And if you hate Zetsubo and haven't played it in a while, I encourage you to give it another try. Especially if you like maps like Origins, Der Eisendrock, or Mob of the Dead, which also have a lot of stuff to do on it. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at our number one spot as the most underrated zombies map is Tog Der Toten. If I were to make a tier list of every Treyarch Zombies map, Tog Der Toten would be in the middle of A tier. But when I look out into the Zombies community, a lot of them seem to think of it as a middling map at best and as a pretty bad one at worst. I think part of that comes from the fact that this is the last map in the Aether storyline and that a lot of people were expecting more from it because of that. Which I don't think is entirely unfair. But if you look at the map for what it is, it's actually a really great map. Like Zetsubo, there's a lot of optional side content to do on it, but unlike Zetsubo, main progression isn't really tedious or obtuse. Power switches are all easy to find. To unlock Pack-a-Punch, the Hermit tells you to find the blue rock in the cave, and it's so obvious that I don't see how anybody could miss it. Maybe getting up to the facility could have used a bit more conveyance. But still, there's a lot to love about this map. The challenge system is great because the challenges remain constant, but you can do the challenge totems in any order you want. And they each give different rewards, so you can go out of your way to do the ones that give you rewards you like more first. The Hermit is a pretty cool mechanic, helping you out with several things around the map. The Wonder Weapons, while they might not be the best, are still pretty fun to use in my opinion. The Tundra Gun is kind of like a launcher, where there's a bit of risk because you can hurt yourself with it, but if you're careful, it's actually pretty effective. The Wonder Wolf DG Sharpshoots might not seem like much until you realize that in order to get its full effectiveness, you gotta get headshots, which adds a nice skill curve to the weapon. Then, of course, there's the Thunder Gun, which is the Thunder Gun. The map itself is also really beautiful. Its use of color is superb, and it makes you feel like you're in a cold, isolated place. Because you are. <laughs> the main easter egg from a gameplay perspective is also pretty good. The snowballs are fun to use, the music boxes are fun to use, hell there's even an easter egg where you get the fucking yellow snowballs, which is the funniest shit ever. But it's a great map that doesn't get the appreciation it deserves, and I think it's worthy of the number one spot on this list. Anyways, that's going to be about it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more, and tell me what Zombies maps you think are underrated. Anyways, that's it. Peace!